Hey everyone, my name is Vishwas and in this video, I'm going to go over my React stack for 2022. I felt that a few of you might be interested in what I am focusing on in the React ecosystem, which will also give you an idea of the different courses you can expect on the channel in 2022. We're going to begin with React. This is a no-brainer since we are discussing about the React stack after all. But my preferred way of using React is with Next.js. Next.js is a React framework which gives you an excellent developer experience with all the features that you would need for an enterprise application. There is hybrid static and server-side rendering, TypeScript support, built-in routing, API conventions, and a lot more. If you haven't already, make sure to check out the Next.js playlist on my channel. Of course, for new tutorials on the channel that needs React, I'll still be using plain React as not everyone knows Next.js. In 2022, I'm continuing my focus on TypeScript. TypeScript is a typed superset of JavaScript that compiles to plain JavaScript. By using React and TypeScript together, you get the benefit of a statically typed language for your UI. This means more safety and fewer bugs shipping to the front end. Companies have started expecting a candidate to know TypeScript, so I recommend you get started on the same. There is a React with TypeScript series on this channel for you to get started with. Next up, we have state management. State management libraries help you manage the data in your application. When dealing with client state, I'm now exploring SUSE Stand. SUSE Stand is a state management solution using simplified flux principles. It is simple, unopinionated, uses hooks, and ticks all the right boxes for state management. I'm hoping to create a tutorial on this topic in the near future. Now it's important to understand when it comes to state management, there are two types, client state and server state. For client state, I'm using SUSE stand, but for server state, I'm going to be using React Query. React Query is a server state library responsible for managing asynchronous operations between your server and client. If you're dealing with a lot of asynchronous data fetching, trust me, this is the library you have to read about. It has great dev tool support and is amazing to work with. There is a pretty detailed React Query series on this channel for you to get started with. All right, next we have component library. To be honest, this is one category where I'm still weighing out my options. In the past, I've used Chakra UI, Material UI, but now there is Mantine and of course, Tailwind. Mantine does look solid and I'm no expert when it comes to Tailwind. So let me know in the comment section, what are you working with in 2022? And just to avoid confusion, I'm not talking about styled components or emotion as they are not UI component libraries. The next package, in my React stack is React hook form. Managing form state, validations, and dealing with submissions. React hook form will make that easy for you to deal with. Version eight will be out this year, so expect a tutorial series on the same a few weeks after the release. Next, we have testing. When it comes to testing, I have Jest with React testing library. They're recommended by the official React docs and are sort of the go-to packages for testing React applications. What is great about React testing library is that it encourages you to write tests that resemble the way users would interact with your software. This helps you avoid implementation details. Rather than dealing with instances of rendered components, your tests will work with actual DOM nodes. Now this is another topic that most of you have requested tutorials on, but at the moment, I'm still not at the stage where I'm comfortable enough to teach you what I know. Hopefully, I'll understand more about its usage and can deliver a series that you all will benefit from. 
Finally, we have Storybook. Storybook is basically a development environment and playground for UI components. It enables you to create components independently and showcase those components interactively in an isolated development environment. What that means is you can develop UI components in isolation without having to worry about the business logic. When working on projects, Storybook allows the front-end team to work on all the presentation components and show them to the stakeholders while the back-end team is working on the APIs. I do have an entire series on Storybook with React, so do make sure to check that out. Now, if you are a React beginner, I would like to suggest a few more libraries for your reference as Next.js might not be what you want to start with. To create a React application, in 2022, I would recommend Wheat over Create React App. It is also something I'm considering using in all my future tutorials. Another package you might want to use when not relying on Next.js is React Router. When building medium to large scale single page applications, routing is essential and my go-to library is React Router. I do have an entire series on React Router so do make sure to check that out. With that, I have pretty much covered what I wanted to discuss in this video. Do let me know in the comment section what your React stack looks like in 2022. Please do subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next series.